The 2014 version of the Giants has had some bumps in the road. But even a rash of injuries can't stop these Giants. First place in the West. Best record in the majors. The orange and black are flat out playing good baseball. Today the Giants look to keep things rolling and sweep the twins. And it's coming up next. Day baseball here at AT&T Park. Fans getting ready to roll into the ballpark as they get ready, and so do we for the final game of this three-game series, Twins and Giants. Hi again, everybody. I'm Dwayne Kuyper. Alongside me is Mike Kruko. Well, the Giants are 5-0 and against the American League, and today they have a chance to sweep the Twins. And, Mike, this team is playing good baseball, and the foundation of this good baseball is starting pitching Bumgarner on the hill. Well, Bumgarner has always given the Giants a chance to win, and I think this is a, a, an especially important start for Madison Bumgarner because of his history against the Minnesota Twins. He's faced them one time. He's 0-1, and his lifetime ERA is 216, and I'm not making it up. His only start in one-third of an inning, he gave up eight earned runs. He will try and avenge that today, but I think the, the key is the killer peas. Pence, Posey, and the Panda, those guys have great numbers against Ricky Nolasco, their opponent today. So let's see where it all falls. Killer peas. Blanco, by the way, Killer B is in center field instead of Pagan. When we come back, we'll have the lineups on the first pitch right after this. Giants baseball on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area is brought to you by Jack in the Box. Head to Jack in the Box and try the new Jack's Blazin' Chicken Sandwich. It's Jack's hottest sandwich yet. And by Toyota, number one in MPG, durability, and resale value. Toyota, let's go places. And smiling into at and Park, it's a beautiful Sunday afternoon. And our game time weather is presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. 
get to the beach. The admission free boardwalk is now open daily. 67 degrees here at the yard. Light winds, humidity at 50 percent, and it'll warm up a little bit as we move along this afternoon. Here's the lineup that Bumgarner is going to face. It'll be Dozier, Maurer, Plouffe, and then the former A, Kurt Suzuki, who's well, he's got 23 RBIs as a catcher. That's the most in the American League. Followed by Nunez, Parmalee, and Escobar. We'll first look at Danny Santana, and then Nolasco will pitch in bat ninth. On the hill today for the Giants will be the left-hander Madison Bumgarner, 6'5", 235-pound, 24-year-old, in his fourth year at the big league level. And this is what he has done in 2014 in 10 starts, 5-3, and three, with a 3.3 ADRA, over a strikeout an inning, with 65 strikeouts and 58 and two-thirds. You're going to see a low 90s fastball with natural cut, good hard slider. He will cut the ball and enhance that movement, curveball and a changeup. And the first pitch of the ball game is a call strike. So we get started at 106. Dozier pulls this ground ball foul. Dozier two hits on Friday, came back and went 0 for 4 last night. So Dozier hitting 255, 11 home runs. And he pops this one up, and it's going to be straight back and out of play. He takes a healthy rip. Not afraid to at all. Let's take a look at that defense playing behind Bumgarner for the Giants, starting in the outfield from left to right. It'll be Colvin, Blanco, and Pence. Good arms on the corners. Crawford and Sandoval on the left side. Hicks and Morse on the right side. And Buster Posey will be in the squad putting down the signs. Hit on the ground to Crawford, who is shading Dozier to pull. And that's how this game gets started with a ground ball to short. Let's take a look at our Nissan Keys to the game. And number one, Bumgarner avenged June 21st, 2011. Why? Well, because that's when he gave up eight earned runs in one third of an inning. His lifetime ERA against the Twins, 216. And we'll forget about that. Number two, Pablo Sandoval against Nolasco. He absolutely has had big time ownage. Nine for 18 lifetime. In the last 10 at bats, two homers, two doubles, and a single. And those are our keys, our Nissan keys to the game. Here's Maurer who takes a strike. Maurer two hits on Friday, and he went one for four last night, so three hits in this series. And that's foul back and out of play. Nice play. Commando, no glove. And the 0-2 delivery to Maurer is just off the plate, called by Paul Emmel. Emmel's got a good strike zone. It's not as big as the zone we saw last night with Jerry Meals, but it's a very good steady zone. He will give knee high strikes. He'll give some belt highs. Corners not as big as what we saw last night, however, but a very good zone to pitch to. Got him. First strikeout for Bumgarner, and that'll bring up Plouffe. Take a look at the pitch grips and uh, what, or actually what Bum, Bumgarner will throw. 43% of the time you're going to see that fastball, and 37% of the time you're going to see that slider. And the other 20% of his pitches will be a mix between the change and the curveball, depending on what is working that day and what he feels like. But for the most part, you're going to see fastball slider. Swing and a miss by Plouffe, who's hitting. 254, three home runs, 29 runs batted in. He's one for six in the series. He has hit some balls hard, though. He's not hit into a whole lot of luck. And a call strike gets nothing in two. Giants won on Friday 6 2, and they won last night 2 to 1. It was a 
win for both starters, Litzikum and Vogelsaw. It's a great angle there to see the low three quarter release from Madison Bumgarner. Really a big upper body turn. Hides the ball well. A lot of his success has to do with how difficult it is for hitters to pick him up. Hit into left field. Coming in is Colvin. And Colvin will make the running catch, and that'll end the inning. So Bumgarner goes one, two, three. Giants are coming up. Blanco will lead things off. Now it's time for the Giants. Here's the lineup that will be facing Nolasco. It'll be Blanco, Pence, and Posey. Pablo Sandoval, not only red hot, but he's been red hot lifetime against Nolasco. Morris will hit fifth, and it's Colvin, Crawford, and Hicks, and Bumgarner will pitch in bat nine. On the hill today for the Minnesota Twins will be Ricky Nolasco. Nolasco, a 31 year old right hander. He's 6'2, 225 pounder out of Corona, California. Eight year veteran and it's nine starts with the twins his first in Minnesota He's two and four with a five five zero ERA really has not gotten on track yet. And his consistency has really suffered because of his ability to control his pitches when he's on you're going to see a low 90s fastball that he two will two and four seam and a lot of good specialty pitches good curveball good slider good change up he'll throw everything at any time. And when he's good his command is very very good it hasn't been that great yet which explains the numbers. However, here at San Francisco, he loves pitching this ballpark. Lifetime four and one with a two five five ERA. Overall against San Francisco, five and five. And Blanco takes high. Blanco is hitting 143. That doesn't really tell the whole story. He's had some pretty good at bats the last couple of weeks. But he's got some ownage on Nolasco. He's eight for 19. There's a lot of guys in this line today that have hit Ricky Nolasco well. Talked about Pablo Sandoval's success against him. Well, there's other guys who have had just about the same, if not more. Blanco fouls this fastball back. It's now one and two. Let's take a look at the Twins' defense. Starting in the outfield from left to right, it'll be Nunez, Santana, and Parmalee. Escobar and Plouffe on the left side. Dozier and Maurer on the right side. Kurt Suzuki will be in the squad putting down the signs. And Blanco just got a piece. So he stays alive. Best arm in the Twins outfield today is Eduardo Nunez in left field. He's got a good arm. So it's one and two to Blanco. And Blanco pops one up into shallow center field. Is this going to fall? It will. It'll look like a line drive tomorrow in the box score. The Giants have their leadoff hitter on. 
Uh, you saw the facial expression of Ricky Nolasco. He thought this ball was going to be an out as soon as it left the bat. But if you look at the break from Danny Santana, who's a natural shortstop, he broke back on the ball, expecting more fly ball, and he could not recover. So what should have been an out goes as a knock. The Giants have something going as Nolasco goes right into the stretch. Blanco with five steals. He's bluffs in a swing. Yeah, maybe a miss. And it's 0-1. He hasn't been thrown out this year. So Pence, seven home runs, 23 driven in. Outside corner strike, and it's a quick 0 2. Pence taking a little time in the outside the box, now back in. Mr. Posey on deck. On the ground, six, and that's all they'll get because of the speed of Pence. Almost has to be perfect with Hunter Pence going down the line. By the way, you may have mentioned it, but Pence has four lifetime home runs off of Nolasco. And that was a little weak grounder to short. So here's Buster Posey. Giants have to get Posey going, and he's got a three for 28 going right now. He really has been slumping. Does not have full command of that barrel head like we were so familiar with him having. In tight, one ball and no strikes. He's had pretty good numbers against Nolasco. He's eight for 20. Pence leaning, he does not go. And that's flipped into left field, a base hit. Pence is going to put on the brakes. And Buster Posey, at the cost of a bat, has got a base hit. Now he needs a couple of those to fall. When you're struggling, sometimes getting jammed is a good sign of coming out of a funk. The ball runs right up his bat, a bell high fader. I mean, I think that thing hit right around the label was pretty impressive barrel head throw. So early on, the Giants are kind of doinking Ricky Nolasco. So here's Sandoval. Big game for Sandoval last night. Trying to give the Giants an early lead here in the first. And that gets away, and everybody moves up. It looked like a knuckleball. It looked like a knuckleball if you watch Kurt Suzuki try to catch it. I mean, he totally got crossed up. I mean, he's expecting something other than what that was. And I tell you, you it did look like a knuckleball. I'm telling you. So now Pence at third, Posey at second. And the next pitch is high. It's two balls and no strikes. Well, Nolasco's basically walking Sandoval. Well, they know he's been red hot. And with an open base, why not? I mean, one thing Nolasco can do, I mean, he can set up a force and pitch for the double play. He should have a green light here.
Lifted out to left. Coming in is Nunez, and he doesn't get it. Going to third is Posey. It goes between Posey's legs. Sandoval has got a base hit, and the Giants lead 1-0. All right, now let's check in with Greg Papa in our studios. All right, thanks, Greg. Here's Morris. You talk about getting dinged in this inning. Well, uh, Nolasco has to feel like he's getting whipped with a wet noodle right now. A bloop single by, well, everybody. Yeah. By Blanco, by Posey, by Sandoval. And this used to be where he could just go out there, drop his glove, and the Giants would lose. Morris with a big swing and a miss. Morris five for 18 in his career against Nolasco. He's got a double. Well, you've got the three bloops. Now you need a blast. In tight. Two balls and one strike. Morris in the game last night went one for two. He also drew a walk. Tyler Colvin to follow. Posey at third. Sandoval at first. Breaking ball. Line to left. Going back is Nunez. He's going to make the catch. And tagging and scoring is Buster Posey. And it's 2 nothing. And that was a well struck Pelota right here. It backed up Nunez. Catching that thing almost knocked him down. Let's take a look at the 3 0 swing of the bat from Pablo Sandoval from our splash cam. And Nunez had been playing way deep and he could not regroup and run it down. And this is our Expo brought to you by your local Toyota dealer, showing you just how close he came to catching that thing. So here's Colvin with one on and two outs. And there's a big curveball that misses. Colvin hitting 324, a home run, five RBIs. He's one for three in the series. And that misses, and it's 2 and 0. Oh. Staying on that inside corner. Colvin has a natural flat swing that really makes him effective for mistakes. Belt high and above guy, I mean, he's on it. He's always had a little bit of a hole down and in. Teams try to pitch him there constantly. Skies this one into right center field, and it'll be Parmalee in front of Santana to end the inning. Two runs on three joints. Two nothing Giants.
Every other team in baseball throughout major leagues will be wearing military inspired jerseys. You can own one of these MLB authenticated Memorial Day game used jerseys as a live uh, online auction is already underway. Go to sfgiants.com slash Memorial Day jerseys to submit your bid. Again, that's sfgiants.com slash Memorial Day jerseys. It's 2 nothing Giants. Bumgarner to go after Kurt Suzuki. Suzuki hitting 299. And the RBI total is pretty impressive. 27. It's a good player. He's going to play in this game a long time. Does a lot of things to help teams win. Great with staffs. He can hit. You do that from the catching position, you stay healthy, you're going to last a long time. Long time. Nunez to follow. There's a strike. Two balls and one strike. Bumgarner has already surpassed his last start against the Twins. I, I like Paul Immel, the plate umpire. I mean, he, he's got the punch your brother call of, of a strike, and you watch him take his right hand and, and signify a strike. It's, it's the same move you have to punch your brother. Yeah, at, at the dinner table, stand in line. He doesn't move anything except his right arm. He doesn't turn his shoulders. Yeah. It's quick. It's the one that mom never sees. By the way, it's the one that mom can deliver too. <laughs> I think you inherit it from your mother. Two and two to Suzuki. And that's it out of play. Nice sellout crowd here today. A lot of shirt sleeves, a lot of orange, a lot of caps. Outside three and two. Uh, check out the umpire Emma on how he calls a strike. Tell me he didn't have a brother. Boom! <laughs> That's one of my favorite ones. Three and two. Morris. One out. Yeah, we had a lot of kids on the field. That was a strike. That's a strike, right? Perhaps absolutely a strike. Bum signing one of the kids waiting. Blanco. A little selfie action. Buster saying, all right, this way. Yeah, come on, go ahead. Buster. Got to go to work now. That little boy wanted to stick around. He wanted to participate. He did. He did not want to leave. So here's Nunez. Nunez hitting 286. He's going to drive this one down the left field line. And it looked like it was going to hook, and then it straightened out. What's up with that? Well, you watch the hitter, and he'll tell you if it's going to go fair or foul. Even Buster's looking like that was weird. And when that ball got hit, Nunez just stood there as if it was going to be foul, and then all of a sudden, hey. Pokes this one to Morris, and Morris will go to the bag. All right, let's check in with Amy G. Amy. All right, gentlemen, there is magic in the boots. Pablo Sandoval told us a little bit about it last night after the win. He's been wearing these cowboy boots since Mother's Day, and he's been getting hit. They're actually a gift from Madison Bumgarner, and I was able to take a picture with his permission today in the clubhouse, so it's up on my Twitter feed and Instagram. Dwayne, I know you love to watch my Twitter feed, so people can get a closer look. Keep wearing the boots, Pablo. Guys. 
It's amazing what hitters will do to hit. Uh, you're right. I mean, Here's Parmalee. If he if he put on a, a pink tutu to go to a his daughter's ballet recital and he that night got four hits, he would wear the pink tutu the rest it's, of the year. It's a fact. Hit well into center field. Blanco now slows down, backpedals, and that'll end the inning. There's the cowboy boot dance. Oh my goodness, hitters. <laughs> Coors Light, cold hard facts, and it's brought to you by Frosted Brood Coors Light. Giants in Interleague last season. Remember, they started out 0 and 5, and they were 6 and 14. Well, this season, it's been totally different. They have started out 5 and 0, uh, and and they're hoping that they can reverse those overall numbers of 6 and 14 from last year. So here's Crawford. Crawford Hicks and Bumgarner. Crawford against Nolasco one for nine lifetime Hicks has never faced him. Crawford one for three last night. One for three. On Friday. And here he skies this one into shallow right field for Parmalee. One out. And here's Hicks. It says one hit in the series. He's also had a couple of RBIs. And the first pitch to Hicks is down low with Bumgarner on deck. Alasco just missing with that fastball. Still looking for a good rhythm. Roll foul. Usually 25 pitches into a ball game, you start to feel pretty confident about your, your release point. The adrenaline's worn off, you've gotten a, a feel for the mound, you're accustomed to the arena, and everything just sort of starts to soften up a bit. Pitches normally become easier to control. Swing and a miss.
One and two. And the pitch is right there, at least in the eyes of Paul Emmel. All right, time now for our AT&T Uverse Rewind. Last night, Ryan Vogelsong, six and two third inning strong, seven strikeouts, no runs allowed. Last six starts, three and one with a 1-3-5 ERA. 35 strikeouts in 40 innings pitch. That, folks, is dealing. And that's our AT&T U-Burst Rewind. So here's Bumgarner. And Bumgarner takes high. One ball and no strikes. Bumgarner, 5 for 19. Here's the winning pitcher from last night. This is the fun day, right? Oh, yeah, day after? Yeah. Bounce foul. Almost out to our ball, dude. David Schwartz, our ball dude out there, styling with good looking glasses. Swing and a miss. One and two. And that's Steve Kowalski, otherwise known as Killer Kowalski. Both gentlemen have been fantasy campers for the Giants, longtime Giants fans. Just off the plate, two and two. Well, that time it was called a strike. At the end of the second, it's two nothing Giants. We go back to May 25th last year. That's when Angel Pagan hit a two run inside the park walk off home run off Rafael Betancourt. Did in the 10th inning and gave Giants a 6 to 5 comeback victory on this May 25th. It marked Pagan's third career inside the park home run and the seventh inside the park home run in AT&T Park history. Fifth by a Giants player. It was also Pagan's second career walk off home run. Oh yeah. Flan was so excited that day. He didn't even sleep that night. That was pretty much fun. Watching the reaction from Flannery was as good as watching the inside the park home run. Here's Escobar who chases the first pitch and misses. Escobar hitting 337. He's got a home run nine driven in. And he's a free swinger. Danny Santana is on deck. 
And that pitch is just high. One and two. Jane scored two runs in the first on three hits. None of the hits were hit hard. And that's a base hit in the first one of the game for the Twins. Well, the Chicago Cubs come to San Francisco tomorrow and they start a three game series. Tomorrow is Memorial Day. It'll be a 105 start time with the Giants patriotic beach towels being given away to the first 20,000 fans, courtesy of Bank of America. Then Tuesday, a 715 start. And then Wednesday, it's back to day games with a 1245 start. There are great seats still available for all three Cubs games. Go to sfgiants.com slash tickets. It is the only visit of the year to San Francisco for Chicago. Here's Santana who looks at a at a pitch down low, one ball and no strikes. Yeah, this was the barbecue apron that was handed out today. Johnsonville, one of our favorites. They sponsored it. I want to get that, I want to get that, I want to get that. Yeah, I'll get you one. Santana out of play, one ball and one strike. Danny Santana in center field today, they say it. Is probably someday going to be the starting shortstop for this Twins team. Santana. Switch hitter. Nine for 28. Those are his numbers for this year. Pure rookie. 23 years of age from the Dominican. And that is a rally apron. That guy has got it figured out. I want to get that. I want to get that. I want to get that. I'll get you one. One and one to Santana. A little flip job into right field. That's going to be a base hit. Pence is going to let it fly. And it's going to be thrown off the screen. Nobody will score, but the back runner goes to second. Well, you're so used to Hunter Pence. And his accuracy when he makes a throw, it's usually to the bag. And if this had been to the bag, they'd have had a chance to get Escobar. But it was way up the line. So far, in fact, that Madison Bumgarner, who was backing up the play, I mean, he couldn't get to it. And the Giants catch a break that it didn't go into the stands. But they do lose the force. This looked like it really sailed on Pence. Hey, threw a two seamer from right field. So here's Nolasco. Nolasco, pretty good hitter. And he'll take a strike and it's 0 and 1. Strikeout situation if you're Madison Bumgarner and you have a pitcher up there. There you see the career numbers for Nolasco. He can hit. <clears throat> Oh and two. It's Brian Dozier on deck. And he got him. And there's your back foot slider for second strike out of the game for Bumgarner. Set up inside, drop that thing and let it just crash in towards the back foot of the right handed hitter. And Nolasco in the swing mode cannot hold up. So here's Dozier who bounced out to Crawford. And he did that to open up the game. Blanco's going to go back. He's going to put it away. Tagging is Escobar. So the Twins are on the board. It's two to one. Hey, you watch Brian Dozier swing, and now that we've had a chance to see him in three games, he's really got a quick bat. That was a nice at bat situationally. See the Dockers deck, which is a new addition to the ballpark this year. It is definitely a day to enjoy the Dockers deck. Here's Joe Maurer. Maurer struck out in the first.
And that pitch is knocked down by Posey. And no throw. And Santana moves over on the wild pitch. So that'll put a little bit more heat on Buster Posey. An easy play to call by Chuck Dibdahl, our official scorer today, and ruled a wild pitch. So Chuck's the man today. Chuck Dibdahl, veteran official scorer. Giants will use several different official scores in the course of the season. There's a strike. So Maurer with 14 RBIs waits on Bumgarner one ball and one strike. Down low. Maurer pretty quiet hitter for being such a tall hitter. Well, you don't have to be around Maurer very long to realize this guy's an athlete. I mean, he's 6'5, 235, and, and he really moves well. Originally recruited by Florida State to be a, a quarterback. He instead signed out of high school, the number one pick in the country from Minnesota, signed by the Twins. Two and two. And athletically, there really isn't a whole lot this guy can't do. Got a great arm. Surprisingly quick for a guy his size. Ten-year veteran, and he's 30 years old. Out of play down the left field line. Bumgarner came back with a fastball. Twin score here in the third. It's two to one. Posey running through a set of signs. Now everybody's ready. And the 2 2 offering is a high fastball with its foul straight back. Well, a high fastball definitely cleaned the, the palate of the eyes. And then when you make a pitch like that, a guy fouls it back. Not a bad idea to go down low with a breaking ball. Got him. Twins on the board. Giants are coming up. Top of the order.
football on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area is brought to you by this solar company. Not just any solar company. The solar company. Switch to solar and save. See the Cove? It's 2-1. Giants. Great day to be out in the Cove. Looks like these folks having a picnic. Here's Blanco. Blanco lays down a bunt. Is this going to be a beauty? It's going to be a beauty. Well, if you're trying to teach somebody how to bunt, save this clip because this is absolutely perfect. Showed it late. Started the bat from the top of the strike zone, catch it towards the end of the bat, which deadens the ball. And it really would have been a miraculous play if Ploof, the third baseman for the Twins, had been able to pull this off. But boy, that's absolutely fantastic effort right there from Grego Blanco. And that's our Ford right choice. And here's Pence. Oh, Blanco had a lean. Come on back. Now let's watch the leaner you're talking about. Hey, oh, yeah, get back. That throw is down low, and Nolasco's got a good move over to first base. What sets up a good move to first base for a pitcher is, is arm action. You have to make an abbreviated throw, and Nolasco is about as compact a flip throw you can make over to first base. If you watch when he throws home, his hand will break from his glove and his hand will swing down below his belt and create the circle with which he throws. When he goes to first, that arm will not drop down below the waist. It will go right straight up into a real compact throwing motion. Pence goes around. It's a ball and a strike. There's the lifetime numbers 303 with four home runs. So they know each other. Sidearm toss to first. And Blanco, a stutter step, but he gets back. Watch the hand as he breaks from his glove and it never drops below his belt and this is really a good tip for a lot of you young pitchers watching. And that's how you get a real quick time to first base. And you don't have to throw it hard it just has to be quick. It's a flip throw. Blanco goes. And the throw, and they're going to get him. Yeah, that's the first time he's been throwing out this year, trying to steal a base. And the last go, he's not going to help you out. He's pretty quick. No question here. The throw comes up the line a bit from the bag. But just an easy play for Dozier to catch and drop the glove and a nice throw from Kurt Suzuki. Pence hits one high. Hits it deep. It is out of here. And it's three to one. Five lifetime home runs against Ricky Nolasco. Home run number six for Hunter Pence. And watch the hands. He drops him, gets him back in place. And when that front foot drops, his hands are high in a good position to cover the strike zone. He gets a mistake up. And boy, we've seen him absolutely crush mistakes up in this hot streak he's been on. So here's Buster Posey. 
And there's a breaking ball for a strike. Nothing in two. Big hitch. Watch that front foot drop. Bang. Hands up. Complete synchronization with his hands and his back hip. Everything has to work. And that's where it wow. wound up. How about that? And I think that would make Hunter Pence very happy. You know that little girl got it? Nice going. Breaking ball and Buster Posey gets it past his teammate Pablo Sandoval. You see the five home runs against Alaska. That's the, for him. That's the most he's got off any one pitcher. So Alaska has got five pages in his book. And on the ground again foul. Smoothie fans. Oh, there's no, there's one. Yeah. I want to get that. I want to get that. I want to get that. Oh. So when they get <laughs> tired of one, just go to the other, right? Uh. Yeah, but you're cooler. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, they figured out a good way to get on TV, didn't they? That's a good way. Two and two to Posey. And another foul. This one off Buster Posey's ankle. We like to stay away from that ankle. Talk about the five pages that Nolasco has in the book of Pence. And we watch the foul off the ankle of Posey. He is not having any fun right now in the batter's box. Yeah, that was more shin, maybe. Half ankle, half shin. Yeah, that, that's a bad one. It's going to take him a while to walk this one off. Yeah. That home run from Pence, number 171 in his career. And as I said, five pages having Nolasco's name on it. Lined out to center field for. Santana. All right, time now for our Togo's big play, the Togo way, and last night's Pablo Sandoval hit a home run off Samuel Daduno, and it was the first one for the Giants. He knocked in both runs in a 2 1 victory, but that was his home run, and for Sandoval, it was home run number six, and that's our Togo's big play, the Togo's way. Five consecutive games with an RBI, and that leaves all active National Leaguers. And in those five games, eight RBIs. And you know, you talk to him about the heart streak, and he just says it's overdue. <laughs> well, that does sound like him. Two and zero on the pitch in the dirt with Morris to follow. Third inning. Sandoval out of play. Soon hit into the club level. And he said he got hot. He just started slowing things down using the whole field. And you know you hear hitters say that so often when they come out of a of a slump. They slow it down. Take what a pitcher gives them. Rap foul at the plate two and two. I think too, when you start to come out of a funk, you also have the ability to make good adjustments within and at bat. You may have one swing like you just saw him go out of strikes and with you're not happy with, but you make adjustments. When you're slumping, it's not easy to make those adjustments. And he got a piece. That was a well placed fastball at the belt. Mm -hmm. 
And the 2 2 pitch to Sandoval. And he bounces this one to second. Dozier on to Maurer, and that'll end the inning. Giants on the board on the home run by Hunter Pence. And it's bye bye, baby. It's the Giants three and the Twins one. Skipper Bruce Bochy announcing last night they will skip Matt Kane on Monday. Yusmero Petit will get the start. Gentlemen, I spoke with Matt before today's game. He said he was already scheduled to take a light bullpen, so he knew it would be short. It, the right hamstring is still tight, and he can't fully throw. He can't let everything go, so they're going to skip a start. His hope is that he'll get back in on his next schedule start and avoid the DL. Gentlemen? All right, so that's good news. I'm going to proclaim that that's good news. Good news it is. Yep. Well, we missed the horse. We want him healthy. Strong legged. Ploof rolls this one to Crawford. Crawford to Morris. One out. And that'll bring up Suzuki. Atlanta and Colorado that game is going to start a little later. Here's Suzuki popped out to Morris. First pitch strike makes his first pitch well today. Slider cutters curveballs sinkers. Just outside to even the count. On deck is Nunez. And wide again, two balls in one strike. Chicago in town for three. Giants then will leave after the game on Wednesday, so we get to pack on Tuesday. That's true. I haven't even unpacked yet. Hey, it, the time flies when you're in this ballpark. Out of play. It's two and two. Time flies when the Giants are winning. Yeah, well, that's all true. He had the two tough towns and two tough teams to play, St. Louis and Cincinnati. Two and two. Day off in Cincinnati. Hmm. 
Well, it's supposed to be 80% chance of raining on that day off in Cincinnati. Well, there was a time where we might have actually brought our golf club. But that went away a long time ago. So the rollerblades. 3 2 pitch. Yeah, that that we saw coming. Yeah, but that was a good 10 years ago. So we'll have to figure out something very exciting for that Monday in Cincinnati. Well, I'm getting inspiration as I see the Zinfandel Commodore. We could take a river boat cruise. Or have a bottle of Zinfandel. Yeah. Three two pitch. Lined. Blanco over and under. Two outs. So here's Nunez. We took a walk one year and we crossed. Is that the Ohio River? Yep. And we kind of got lost. Crossed over into Covington, Kentucky. And uh, that was a little weird. There's belt tie strike and it's 0 and 1. No balls in one strike. And the bluff of a bunt. And uh, from that point on, we always kind of went in a different direction. I think we ran into some people making moonshine. They were making moonshine. 1 1 pitch. Swing and a foul. It's 1 and 2. That's why we made it the executive decision that we're never going back that route again. And it explained a lot about Marty Brenneman. Brenneman, the Hall of Fame broadcaster for the Reds. Who is the big cheese there? He is the big cheese. One and two, he wears the big hat around that town. Yes, he does. The one two pitch he is outside. Now, Tom, his son, has maybe tried to shrink the old man's hat a little bit, but that, it's not working. No. Tom Brenneman, his son, is also broadcasting with. The Reds. Tom someday will be a Hall of Famer, in our humble opinion. 2 2 pitch. He got him, and that'll end the inning. Four strikeouts for Bumgarner. Morris is going to lead things off. San Francisco Giants. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of San Francisco Baseball Associates, LLC. All right, we got a perfect gift for Father's Day. How about an orange and black necktie plus tickets to two Giants games? It's the Giants Father's Day gift pack starting at 39 bucks. Tickets to the Father's Day necktie giveaway is June 15th. And the 25th anniversary tribute to David Derecki's comeback on July 12th. Two great games plus the necktie. 
sfgiants.com slash mini packs. Here's Morris. Anything that's got Dave Dravecki's name tagged to it, I'm in. I'm in. Morris takes a strike. I think Mr. Emmel's strike is now getting called a little quicker, so you got to pay attention. His jab is a little shorter. He's still punching his brother. A one ball and one strike. You know, the funny thing is when you're on the mound and you see a, an umpire that has a a very distinct way of signifying a strike. <laughs> you try to keep him doing it. Yeah. Driven to right. Parmalee is going to watch this one sail over his head and it kicks away from him. And Morris is in his second base with a double. Well, he is absolutely crushing the ball today. His first at bat was a sacrifice fly that almost knocked Eduardo Nunez, the left fielder, down. And here he, he gives Parmalee, the right fielder, no chance to get on this. This is just a big man's line drive. And watch that right hip come through and see the power generated with that lower body in complete balance as he drives the opposite way. And that is a big league at bat right there. Wow. And here's Colvin. Second career double for Morris off of Nolasco. And Colvin fouls it out of play. Colvin hit a fly ball to right field. He's 0 for 1. He ended the first inning. So in a bouncing ball, it'll be Maurer to Nolasco. Nice job by Colvin. Time to log on to CSNBarea.com and decide the player of the game. Your vote counts. Winner will be revealed during Giants Post Game Live. You can follow the action on the diamond like never ever before with enhanced Bloomberg stats and more. Giants in game live on CSNBarea.com. Log on and you can vote right now. Now that was indeed a good at bat. It allowed Morris to get over to third base, setting up a first, a runner at third, and one out situation for Crawford. Very unselfish at bat. Giants 17 sack flies this year. That's the second most in the National League. This series alone, they've had three against the Twinkies. Way outside, 1 and 0. And this is a 100% pure strikeout situation for Nolasco. You see Tim Hudson watching. On the ground, foul. All right, opportunity. Oh, oh no, that's good enough. Steve Kowalski. All right, he's got a glove contract with U.S. Steel. Here we go. Clank. Killer. You could have made us proud. That's the glove. One ball and one strike. Deep enough? We're going to find out. Santana catches. Here comes Morris. And the throw is wide. And it's a sacrifice fly. And the Giants lead 4-1. to one. And that's what the big leagues is all about. Uh, a leadoff double. A very unselfish at bat from Tyler Colvin to get Morris to third base. And then Brandon Crawford in a pure strikeout situation. Being able to get a fly ball deep enough to score the runner from third. And... Fundamentally, that'll make a manager and a general manager smile. Morris being very deliberate and an easy score as the throw goes up the line. Flannery was right behind him yelling. Here's Hicks. Hicks takes low. Well, and you can manufacture a run and use your your outs wisely. 
And it just makes it makes everybody feel good. I mean, that's baseball. That's that's small ball. Down low. How about that? Brandon Crawford leads the National League and sacrifice flies at number five on his stat sheet. Remember a few years ago the Giants just could not get that at bat. He was so frustrated. The two one to Hicks. Hicks skies one into right center field. This has hit a long way. Is anybody going to get there? And Santana will get there way out in Triples Alley, and that'll end the inning. Giants lead four to one. Killed that thing. Four one Giants time now for our solar company electrifying play of the week. We just cannot get enough of this play. We go back to Wednesday in Colorado. Bases loaded, nobody out, and Brandon Crawford comes up with a great glove flip to the bare hand of Hicks, who completes it with a bullet to Morse, and that's a six four three double play. The Rockets will score one. The Giants will win now five to one, and that is our solar company electrifying play of the week. That was a good one. That was a good one. So here's Parmalee. Giants with a four to one lead here in the fifth. Parmalee hit a fly ball to center field. He's 0 for 1. And he looks at a strike. Bumgarner with 58 pitches. And that's way outside to even the count. Saw a note in the paper, Mike, that Brandon Belt had his cast taken off. Yeah, he was looking forward to today for that very reason. I'm not sure there's a whole lot of baseball activity that he can do, but that's the start. Trust me, we've both been there. Well, I mean, when you've been immobile for a long time, you know, you lose hand strength, so now he starts building it up. Two-one pitch, and uh, apparently, pretty nice swing at that two-one pitch. I'll say this Michael Morris has done a nice job in his in his place at first. And the 2 2 offering. Got him. Probably might have hurt himself on that swing. 
Well, he hurt his confidence because he really went out of the strike zone. They set up a way. This thing goes above the hand, and it winds up being a great pitch, and that totally breaks Parmley down. You're right. I don't think this thing felt good on his wrist. Wrist, ankle. Both ankles. That's when a swing and a miss can beat you up. Here's Escobar, who's single in the third. There's oh. that quick call by Emil. <laughs> I love that thing. All five of Bumgarner's strikeouts have been swing and miss. A one ball and one strike. Santana to follow. Elevator, high fastball. Right where Buster Posey wanted it. Right. Watch the umpires. It's quick now. Boom! I'm telling you, he had a brother. He's got that technique down. <laughs> uh, two and two. Good hard cutter. Now, when he calls strike one and strike two, it's different when he calls strike three. Yeah. <laughs> two and two. That's foul. This doesn't count, by the way. Yeah, for Steve Kowalski, no. that does not count. Makes a friend, though. It's going killer. Yeah, pull your pants up. Easy, please. He's a plumber. Three and two. Just don't get that in other shows. Here we try to cover everything. Three balls and two strikes. Got him. And we finally got a chance to see Paul Immel and his ring him up call. And it really is the bow and arrow call. All right, watch Paul Immel. Strike three. Ah. <laughs> Umpires. Ah. <laughs> it's a good one. Here's Santana. My favorite of all time was Dutch Renner. Because Dutch Renner would step out of the entire home plate area. Bumgarner is going to knock it down. Now Santana can run a little bit, and he's going to reach. It's got to be got to be a base hit all the way. Yeah. And Alaska is going to hit. Well, this is a play you think you have control of the whole time. Hits off the glove. Now, right now, no panic. He's kind of figuring out his footwork to get to the ball, and then he just couldn't get a handle on it. And it winds up being a hit. Here's Nolasco in a sw swing and a miss. No balls in one strike. I just want to finish that thought about Dutch Winter. If you drive up, go west on Highway 92 to 280, and then go north and look on the right side of the freeway, you'll see a statue. Now they say it's one Ipro Serra, but it really is what Dutch Renner used to use for a strike call. Well, yeah, he, depending on whether you're a left or right handed hitter, he would almost look like he was coming into the dugout. 14 of 18 first pitch strikes for Bumgarner. That's a fantastic ratio. I think he moved around so much that it took about five years off his career. I <laughs> do too. And I think they called a block on Bumgarner, so all this is irrelevant. Now the best way to describe it is halfway between home plate and first base. There's a runner's box, and there's a little white line at the beginning, about 45 feet away from home plate. If you're a left, if you're a left-handed pitcher, you cannot stay out, you cannot step towards the home plate side of the halfway point of the first base line, and then throw to first, and that's what he did. There you see. The little line right there. And if you step 
in the eyes of the umpire to the home plate side of that line and throw to first. That's a ball. You are deceiving the runner with your motion. You can't do that. Got him. Seven strikeouts for Bumgarner. He strikes out the side. And Madison Bumgarner will lead things off. Giants and the Cubs tomorrow, which is Memorial Day. Pre-game live is going to start at 12:30, and then we'll have the game for you right at one o'clock. And if I could find the pitching matchups, it would help. And it'll be Jeff Samarja against Yasmero Petit. We're going to see one of the best right-handers facing the Giants this year in Samarja. So join us. And yeah, I remember. Remember when you used to do that on the road? You'd paint, <laughs> and you know it went from painting to rollerblading and everything. And, and she's got the official Dwayne Kuyper home run yeah, T-shirt on. Of course. You know what? I I lost it, and I, now I know where it went. <laughs> Here's Bumgarner who swings and misses. Yep, she's figured out a way how to get on TV. I'm looking for that painting. I'd like to know what happened to it. How long did it take you to do that? Well, it was a paint by the numbers, so it wasn't that hard. Bumgarner takes a strike. It's nothing in two. But I would like to find it. Hey, nowadays, somebody can make that happen. <laughs> it's got to be in a garage someplace. A little dusty. Yeah, if you, anybody sees that at a yard sale, Get it, send it to us, and we'll reimburse you. Absolutely. We got some Ryan Vogelson barbecue aprons we can trade oh you for. Yeah. Here's the one two pitch to Bumgarner. Breaking ball, two and two. And Bumgarner takes wide. So it's three and two. And Bumgarner takes the walk. All right, let's check in with Amy G. Amy. All right, Dwayne, it's time for our fan photo contest. It's sponsored by AT&T. Tweet us your best 
Giants fan, photo, hashtag CSNBA fan, photo you're looking at Cassandra from San Jose, or actually her toes. That's a very fancy Giants pedicure. A for effort, Cassandra. Make sure to tweet at CSNBA name and hometown. Dwayne? Perfect. Here's Blanco. Blanco's got a couple of hits. And a big swing and a foul into the glove of Suzuki. Blanco opened up the game with a hit, but then had a bunt single in the third. Blanco grounds it into right field, a base hit. He's three for three. Bumgarner moves to second. Yeah, he's getting closer and closer to getting out that interstate. That swing of the bat right there puts him at 186. Remember, about a week ago, he was not even on the interstate. He was on the bingo card hitting 086. So they're starting to happen for him here. He gets a change up down and into the knees, just drops a head on it. And with Maurer playing close to the bag. It was an opportunity on the right side of the infield and he finds it. So Giants have set the table. Here's Pence. Pence is reached on a fielder's choice and he's homered. And he rolls this one a big bouncer over Tim Flannery. Nolasco looks to second and it's low to Pence. One ball and one strike. Starting to see some activity now in the bullpen. Anthony Swarzak. We have not seen Swarzak in this series yet. In tight. A lot of time out of the stretch for Nolasco today, and that was pitch number 75. Pence. Yep. Emil's going to say he went around. Sometimes that that gets called, and sometimes it doesn't. Did he go? Yep. Here's the 2 2. Pence wraps it foul again past Tim Flannery. Now, earlier in the third inning, Alasco tried to backdoor a little two seam fastball. He left it up and in and uh, Hunter Pence quickly knocked it out of the ballpark the fifth time that he has taken Alaska deep in his career. Two balls, two strikes. Breaking ball and a base hit into left field. They're going to hold Bumgarner. So the bases will be loaded for Buster Posey. You have a guy that hits the ball that hard, it really shortens the range of infielders. I mean, that ball was loud. And Escobar, a shortstop who we've really applauded because of the, the great range that he's shown in this series, had no time to go to his right to try and backhand it. And with that swing of the bat, it's going to bring out Rick Anderson, the pitching coach for the Twins. And I think this is just a time killer here to make sure that Swarzak is good and ready in the Twins bullpen. Hey, Raj Mathai. There's Max. Max sitting on the old man's lap. They came up to the booth. Max gave us a couple of high fives. 
took some pictures. He's a good man that Raj Mathai. Yes, indeed. He does a great job too. Uh, he was great when he was with the NBC Bay Area broadcast. Our man on the field, and then, yeah. he, then he then he became the anchor. Screwed up well, everything. He became a big wheel. So here's Buster Posey. And a strike and it's 0 and 1. So right away pitching for the ground ball he goes to the two seam pass ball. And a quick 0 2. Bang bang I mean, that's big movement. Yeah, that's maybe a good idea not to swing at those. Yeah, keep those down around the knees. Those are pitches that get ground balls, which is what Nolasco is pitching for. Although now with two strikes, he might try to take a shot to try and strike Posey out. And Buster Posey stays with the off-speed pitch and follows it down the right field line. Posey have a little conversation with himself. Got him. I mean, really, four perfect pitches. So here's Sandoval. That belt came back just a little bit, didn't it? Yeah, suppose he saw that thing, gave up on it, and the movement just kept working its way back on that outside corner, and Suzuki didn't even move the glove. See how wide the target is and watch the ball come back to him. And Emil says that looks pretty good from here. Sandoval is one for two. Out to left field for Nunez. Bumgarner tagging. And he's going to stay at third. Now, Nunez has an outstanding arm. And Bumgarner does not have any speed. So an easy decision there for Tim Flannery. So a wasted opportunity for Buster Posey and Pablo Sandoval. And now it's going to take a base hit or a mistake. To get a run or two in here in the fifth. Now, one thing that Ricky and Alaska has not done today, and that's fool Michael Morse. Two at bats, two extremely loud line drives. One was caught for a sack fly, the other one was a double to right field. So, whatever Alaska has been selling, Morse is buying lots of it. Off the plate, one and zero. Not by much. You can see how the hits have been distributed throughout the outfield, line to line, 15 to left, 13 to center, 15 to right. That is a sign of a good hitter. It's one and zero. And this is fouled on the right field line. And he broke his bat right off the end of the bat. You know, a lot of guys they get attached to their bats. Well, Michael Morse, it, it, it tears him up when he breaks one of his bats. He travels with a humidifier that was given to him by Ishiro Suzuki. Big case with a stand in each one. Um, looks like a gun case. Open it up and there'll be room for a dozen bats. 34 and a half, 32. Sports away, but Bumgarner's not going anywhere. It is a swing. It's one and two, I believe. Put his hand up. 
and it looked to us like he signified a strike. You're putting two and one on the board. So we'll assume the board is right. We were wrong. Bumgarner, Blanco, Pence. With Moore set to plate. <laughs> two and two. Went at it with a breaking ball and it had some hang time to it. Slip in the outside corner, this thing goes Ooh. middle in. He got away with one there. Two balls, two strikes. On the ground, that's a fair ball. Bumgarner scores. Blanco scores. Kent scores. They all score. And the Giants have busted it wide open on a ground ball right over the third base bag. And that'll do it for Nolasco. When it's time for a change thing speedy oil change and auto service. Your oil change tune up and brake experts. We'll be back. On the hill now for the Twins is Anthony Swarzak, a real workhorse. 17th time that he's come in. I mean, if there's such a thing as an innings eater in the bullpen, he's the guy. He led all Major League last year in innings pitched by a relief pitcher with uh, 93. And when you take your bats against this guy, you're going to see a fastball that's low 90s. He can sink it, he can cut it, he's got a Big curveball and a changeup. And he's facing Tyler Colvin, who's 0 for 2. He said 93 innings last year, he had 96, to correct myself. Colvin fouls it back. Another breaking ball, another hanger. And they set the defense to play him off the line at third base, and he simply hit away from the defense, and there wasn't a whole lot that Trevor Poof could do. And once it got down in the corner, an easy score for everybody, and you can see the reaction.
Colvin lifts this one out to left field, moving Nunez back, but now in. And that'll end the inning. So Morris with a big smile. He knocks in three, and the Giants lead 7-1. All-Star Teacher brought to you by Provident Credit Union. You can go to CSNBarrier.com there, and that's where you can vote. It's in its eighth season. And the Comcast Sports and All-Star Teacher Program recognizes Bay Area teachers that make a difference. The winning teacher will receive twenty thousand dollars for his or her school. So please check it out and make your vote. Every candidate is a winner. That looks fast. Yeah. And. and, and I'd like to water ski behind that. What do you think? No. Absolutely. You have to get a long rope and get yeah, way back there. To get way back. Here's Dozier. Dozier had a sacrifice fly in the third inning. He takes a strike. The Rockies and Braves are underway. Morales against Tehran. If you just joined us, Josh Beckett threw a no hitter today in Philadelphia, first of his career. And the Dodgers shut out the Phillies 6 0. Arizona playing a double header against the Mets today. Arizona won the first game. They're leading the second. Those your swing and a miss. Got him. Well, there goes the boat, and it is indeed quick. And yeah, you want to water ski behind that? No, I changed my mind. <laughs> Get after it. I want to be inside. It's gone again. Mauer struck out twice in this game. Swing and a miss, all in one. Yep, we'll find the cotton candy family at least every other game. Well, they're here again. And we found them today. Mom's digging it too. It's usually just the kids, right? Today, we got a mom that's into it. Okay, one thing about today's start with Madison Bumgarner is his fastball command has been outstanding. He has really been able to put it on each corner, inside, outside. This is what he's been striving to get to. 
Mauer just got a piece. Well, three pitches away, three hard fastball set. It definitely sets up the inside corner, and that's where they struck him out in his last at bat back in the third. Out of play. Cutter away at the knees. Again, perfectly placed. Anytime you can take the legs out of a swing for a hitter like Maurer, I mean, you've made a good pitch. And Maurer was reaching just to protect. Got him. That's a hat trick. Nine strikeouts. For Bennis and Bumgarner. They set the target away. It goes above the hands inside, and they get him the same location they got him the second time up. But boy, he's thinking fastball. He shook off a breaking ball call from Posey to get to this fastball, and it was live. Good high elbow position. Grab some pine meat. Two outs. Here's Plouffe. And the first pitch is wide. One ball and no strikes. Hit on ground to Sandoval. Goes down, gets up, got him. And that'll end the inning. Nice play, Sandoval. It's all working. And then he throws a strike. It'll be Crawford to lead things off. 7-1 Giants. Net Bay Area is brought to you by Heffernan Insurance Brokers, offering business and personal insurance, employee benefits, and financial services. Visit us at HeffINS.com and by Xfinity, home of the most live sports. 7-1 Giants, bottom of the sixth inning, on a beautiful Sunday afternoon here at the Yard. I don't think they have enough people on the lovely Martha today. Holy smokes, it's tilting right. <laughs> I think that's, I guess an extreme rules violation there. Let's, I need to check out that group. Crawford takes a strike. Yeah, what's going on here? Well, uh, there's a party. You see any of your kids in there? I'm looking. Yeah, I'm looking for mine too. The 0 1. Crawford follows it out of play. Crawford, a sacrifice fly in the fourth. He knocked in his 23rd run. Yeah. 
Look out. I mean, you think about the difference in this team from last year. Hicks is hitting eighth. He's got eight home runs, 20 RBIs. Crawford's got 23. There's 43 runs batted in from your seven and eight hitters. They've also got 14 home runs combined. Crawford fouls it back. Yeah, and, and, and you're pitching against a lineup that has that type of clout down at the bottom of the lineup. That's intimidating. I mean, you expect that as a pitcher, you're going to get your home run strength in the middle of the lineup. But when you start seeing it down below, well, it, it's rough to pitch to. And that's not to mention the defense that both those gentlemen play. Here's the one two. Crawford skies it out to left. Nunez is coming in. One out. Talk about the eighth spot in the lineup. 24 RBIs come from the eighth spot. Brennan Hicks in that spot, 12 RBIs. And that in itself is, a, is another intimidating thing for a pitcher to. To have to deal with a guy that productive. Yeah, Crawford's got nine out of the eighth spot. There's a pitch high to Hicks. Six he is 0 for 2. He did hit a ball about as far as you can hit it in a triple alley. But it was ran, it was run down by the right fielder. Or check that center fielder, Santana. It takes a rip. On the 1 0 pitch, it's one ball and one strike. And nice, healthy fastball from Swarzak, 94 miles per hour. Two and one, Bumgarner on deck. Home half of the sixth inning. Two and two. Giants have scored in every inning except the second. And he got him. He snuck it right by Hicks, who's a good fastball hitter. Two outs. And here's Bumgarner. He opened up the fifth with a walk and eventually scored. Well, he's going to hope he sees one of those fastballs that Brandon Hicks saw. Yeah. Garner, a good fastball hitter. A little bit out over the plate. It's knee high, perfect location for strike one. Bumgarner likes him up a little bit higher. Back down around the knees again, a quick 0-2. Outside, one and two. Five hits on the season for Bumgarner. And he shoots this one to right. But it's going to be Parmalee there, and that'll end the inning. So the second one, two, three inning for the Giants. It comes in the sixth, seventh inning coming up. Seven one Giants.
to you by your local Toyota dealer. And Alaska got knocked out after 88 pitches. Bumgarner still in there. No walks, nine strikeouts. Morris has got four RBIs in this game with a couple of doubles. And Hunter Pence, a big fly. And for Hunter Pence, he is six of the year. The old and the new, is that it? Well, you're right. There's the old uh, Giants apron, and this is the one that was given out today. <laughs> I don't know how many of the old ones are left. I've still got one. It's a good one. I like the new but version. You, but you don't have to take it on the road like you did the last. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Suzuki to face Bumgarner. Suzuki has popped out and flied out. And he takes a strike. That one slips out of the hand to Bumgarner. One ball and one strike. He hasn't had many slip out of his hand. I mean, his command today has been sensational. He hasn't come close to a walk. Out of play. One and two. And those are the days for any pitcher that you remember. I mean, those are the ones that are the most fun when you got a feel of all your pitches and you're just placing it wherever you want to throw it. That's what you work for. Did it go through Suzuki or did it hit him? I think it was behind him. No, it got him. That's got to be a broadcaster's jinx right there. Yep, hit him in the heel. Trying to throw a back foot slider, hit him in the front foot. I take full responsibility of that. Yeah, doesn't happen very often. But you're going to have to wear this one. Here's Nunez. Nunez is 0 for 2 as he lifts this one out of play. Morris will play in front of the bag with Suzuki, the base runner, and that's lifted foul of Souvenir down the right field line. Well, a great hat to wear on Memorial Day weekend. Good shades, too. Yeah. It's hard to see that hat. Well, it's a camel hat. Oh, and two. And this pop up is going to be just to our right. Parmalee is on deck. And it's very high. One and two. The elevator fastball, I mean, it's a great pitch, but it, it, it's got to be located properly. So it's too high, it's an easy take, doesn't really set up much. And that was too high. Let's see, Raposi wants that fastball, and that last one was a good one. That was to the spot he wanted. High again, two and two. George Cantos now starting to head down to the Giants bullpen. Ah, 
out of play again. So Nunez putting up a fight here. Giants play him to hit the ball to right field. Gregor Blanco, the center field, is about 10 steps towards the right center field gap. You can see they've really pinched the gap here. They've given him the alley in left center, and the line in left field is completely wide open. Crawford to Hicks. And that's all they'll get. Hicks knew that Nunez runs well, so he's going to try to get it out of there quickly. He couldn't get it out of there at all. Well, the official Giants mobile app at the ballpark is now available to download for free. This is a must have app for Giants fans when visiting AT&T Park as it allows you to check in to unlock special offers, find your favorite ballpark foods, view game highlights, and even upgrade your seat. Learn more at sfgiants.com slash ballpark app. Or text ballpark to 31826 to download at the ballpark right now. Yep. Remember the old pictures from the 30s? Norman Rockwell? This is going to go to the backstop. That's how people dress to come to the ballpark. Oh, yeah. Well, they just went to church and then came to the ballpark. And they're looking quite dapper. She's got her son hat on. And he's rocking the Panama right there. He's rocking a lot of good things. Good tie, good knot. Seersucker jacket built for summertime and hot weather. Perfect. 1 and 0 oh to Parmalee. That was pitch number 100 for Bumgarner. And a minute, two and one. Yeah, that's been the one spot that Parmalee has, has not been able to make the adjustment. The, the, the pitch, the fastball up. Two and two. Bumgarner sitting on nine strikeouts. Out of play on the high fastball. So it's two and two to Parmalee. Escobar on deck. And another foul. A lot of foul balls this inning. Bumgarner just taking his time. Got him, number 10. And here's Escobar. Good, hard breaking ball, and I mean a perfect location. Ahead in the count. You can watch the way that he grips the slider. And as it comes out of his hands, throw that ball, and there's a little red dot on it. The eye of the slider that tips off the pitch, but when it's thrown at that velocity in that location, even if he tips it, you can't do much with it. Escobar rolls it foul to the backstop. Oh. 
0 and 1. On the ground, Sandoval. Sandoval will straighten up and throw, and that'll end the inning. So Bumgarner should have get a great ovation when he departs. You can hear our Giants fans. It's 7 1 Giants. Check in with Amy G. Amy. All right, Dwayne. Well, I had a chance to catch up with one of your former teammates, Dan Glad. He's now a color analyst on the radio side for the Minnesota Twins. He was a rookie with the Giants in 83 when Dwayne Kuyper and Mike Kruko played. And actually, Mike, this one's for you because he shared a story with me that I thought everybody should hear. If you remember specifically you taking a 1-0 loss to Dwight Gooden because Dan dropped a ball. He said he was getting booed as he was coming off the field. And you stood there and you waited for him and you put your arm around him and walked off the field with him. He says he will always remember how you two took him under his wing. Guys. Yep. Well. He was a hard guy to handle. Somebody took two of us to take him <laughs> under his wing. <laughs> it's a 24 hour a day job. We needed double wings for that guy. But he played it right. You're one look at a player that really symbolized the heart of that club. It was Danny Gladden. He never took a day off mentally, and all he wanted to do was beat you. There's a young Mike Kuko on the right. By the way, nice job I'm not yelling at that kid for dropping that fly ball. <laughs> Here's Blanco to lead things off in the seventh. He took it hard, too. Blanco's got three hits. He's got his average up to 186. He's a hit away from being. Off the interstate. At the knees. One ball and one strike. Two and one. Yeah, and it is a big deal when you hit one something for a long time to get into the twos. It's a long climb back. And when you're not getting steady playing time and you're a bench player. I mean that's that's purgatory. 1984 I got into the twos on the last at bat of the year. <laughs> Give me some on that. It's like whoa. <laughs> Are you kidding me I'm hitting 200. The rest of the year I'm hitting 200 there's strike three call. 
All right, join us tomorrow. It's Memorial Day. Giants pregame live will start at 12:30. We'll be on the air at one o'clock with the first pitch. And then the Cubs, hey, will they'll come back on Tuesday. It's a night game, back to a day game on Wednesday. Then the Giants will travel to St. Louis for four, day off in Cincinnati for three. All of those games will be on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. Hey, you smear up a teat on the hill for the Giants taking on Jeff Samarja. Hard throwing right hander for the Cubs. George Contos will pitch the eighth inning for the Giants as he completes his warm up throws. Pence with a big swing and a miss. One and two. He's got two hits. In the game today, he's reached on a fielder's choice. He scored three times. Flips this one. Shallow center field. And he's got his third hit. When you're hot, you're hot. And what do you call that kind of hit? That's a one do, baby. Magic one do. And that's maybe enough to get him over 300. A lot of moving parts, but the hands still a pretty, pretty small load. And we always talk about the importance of, of getting the front foot down. And when you get jammed, that's a good thing. Here's Buster Posey. One for three this afternoon for Buster Posey. Giants hitting instructors will tell you that a little bit too much going on below the belt right now with Posey. He doesn't have that quiet lower body like he normally has. On the ground, it could be a pair. That's one, and that's two, and that'll end the inning. We played seven here at AT&T Park. It's seven-one, Giants. As we head to the eighth inning, when it's time for a change, thing, Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune-up and brake experts. Take a look at the year that Contos was having in Fresno, 0-2 of the 3 8 OERI. But look at the strikeouts: 35 strikeouts against just three walks and 23 and two-thirds. And with Contos, you're going to see a, a, a low 90s fastball and a good hard slaughter. It has always been his backbone. He's now throwing a changeup. And a two seam fastball. So it, as he's gotten up here, he's come back with a couple of different looks, but throwing with a lot of confidence. I and mean, you can't have that many strikeouts without having a lot of confidence in your stuff. Always good to see George Cantos back in the big leagues. 
good guy. He is a good guy. On the double switch, Hector Sanchez will stay in the will come into the game. Buster Posey's day is finished. And Hector will hit in the ninth spot, and the pitcher spot in the lineup will become the number three spot. So Danny Santana will lead things off. He's got a couple of hits. Bumgarner gave up three hits. Santana had two of the three. And he takes a strike. Swing and a miss. 0 and 2. 92, 93 mile an hour fastballs. Bang, bang. Both two seamers running away from the left handed hitting Santana. One and two to Santana. He got him. And the slider was the payoff pitch. And it looked like just a hanging slider. But Santana could not lay off it. Here's Herman, Chris Herman. By the way, the Twins will fly home today. They'll get in around midnight. They play tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, that's that's a tough call. There's a cheerleader. Yep, she's got it going. Herman takes top off. One ball and no strikes. You know that, that little one. Twenty-four hours a day of entertainment. Yeah. And that's one where you better not take your eye off her. Out of play, nothing in two. The game tomorrow is mentioning that Twins will fly home, get in around midnight, play tomorrow. It'll be the Rangers in town for four. And that fastball is high, one and two. Former Giant Kevin Correa will pitch tomorrow, and Giants missed him in that in this three-game series. Tap foul. A couple of Cal Poly kids on this active 25-man roster for the Twins. Yeah, Kevin Correa and Casey Fiend. Swing and a miss. That's a 94 mile an hour fastball. And he said he had more fastball. He said his mechanics are solid. He says, I'm starting to see a difference in my velocity here in a reach back situation. Two seam fastball at 94. And he shoots that right by Herman. So, boy, you, you watch him throw to two guys and right away you know that he's in a very good set of mechanics. Pretty good pitch. Contos thought it was a strike. So did Hector Sanchez. Paul Immel has been good today. It's been a good steady strike zone. That's not missed many. There's a strike. And there's that punch to his brother. It's a quicker jab than it was in the first. Joe Maurer on deck. This will carry out to Blanco. And it'll also end the inning. Nice inning for Cantos. We'll head to the bottom of the eighth.
where Pablo Sandoval is going to lead things off. Pablo Sandoval, and talking about the Giants' success, he says, we're playing hard. We go out there and we don't look at stats. We're playing our game. We're having fun. We have good chemistry. We pick each other up. And that's our Geico quote of the game. 7-1 Giants. When it's time for a change, think speedy. Oil change and auto service, your oil change tune-up and break experts. That career, the new pitcher for Minnesota. Career, a four-pitch pitcher. Fastball, curveball, slider, changeup. We'll see low 90s velocity with that fastball. Sandoval, an RBI single in the first. And then a ground ball out and a fly ball out. And that is up the middle, and Dozier can't quite get to it. Back. Yep. The panda mode. Pablo Sandoval back. Another two hit day. Earlier in the day, it was fifth inning, it was a 4 1 ball game. Bases loaded, two outs, and a two strike count. Michael Morse does this. And he hits it down the line and clears the bags. And boy, is he having a first half. These the Giants and RBIs back on four more today. He is having fun. Two doubles today. Sacrifice fly. And a swing and a foul out of play. Colvin on deck. And that's in tight. It's one ball and one strike. Atlanta leading the Rockies 3 0. That game is in the fourth inning. Evan Gaddis has two home runs off of Franklin Morales as there's a pitch high to Morse. It's one, make it two balls and one strike. Dodgers one. Padres are winning. Arizona 1-1. One, one. It's a doubleheader, and they lead in the second game. Down the left field line. That's a fair ball. 
Sandoval is going to be held. Morris has got his third double. And every one of them was hit well. And even the sacrifice fly that he hit back in the in the first inning was a absolute rocket. And whatever for whatever reason, when Morris gets on second base and they start showing him on the board, the people go crazy here. Well, they should. I mean, he's been that good. Oh my goodness. See the grip where he overlaps the top hand and the bottom hand with his little finger, almost like a golf grip. But he is throwing some head. Holden fouls it back. He saw the graphic the first time in his career. He's had three doubles in a game. In tight. One ball and one strike. Base is open, but I don't think that's an issue here. I just think he's pitching for the strikeout. Yeah. I'm not saying you can't get a ground ball with that curveball, but it's got to be down below the zone to get it. Area Adrian's is on deck. On the ground, Mauer with a great play. They're going to get the out. Coming in to score is Sandoval. Well, that was a good play. And Morris was watching. Colvin spins on this thing. And all six foot five inches of Joe Maurer needed to spear that one and take extra bases away from Colvin. Just smothers it up and becomes a, an unassisted put out for. Mauer, but you're right. I mean, Moore should have been going to sit third base on that. Uh, three doubles. That's good. Here's Adrianza. Swing and a miss. No balls in one strike. Dribbled foul third base side Tim Flannery will pick it up. On the ground Maurer again. And he's going to flip it to Guerrero. Now you think about this is a this is a catcher playing first base. So one play he goes completely laid out to his left here, and the next play he goes completely laid out to his right. Spears it, nice underhand flip to Guerrero, and he takes away a knock and an RBI away from Adrianza. Yeah, we see what Bruce Bochy's doing as he's getting some at bats for some of his. Bench guys, because Arias is going to hit for hits. Low, one ball and no strikes. When you play so many tight games like the Giants do, you don't get many games like this where you can stretch out that bench. How important are these one at bats for these guys? It's huge because Arias may end up coming up tomorrow in a big at bat. And at least has seen some some in-game pitching as opposed to just batting practice pitching. He's gonna sky this one to right. Dozier shading his eyes. And that'll end the inning. Giants pick up a run. Colvin gets the RBI. Ninth inning coming up, it's 8-1 in Giants.
Denver Sportsnet Central tonight at 6. Right here on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. You'll get reaction to this game and Andy Baggerly with the latest from here. And uh, the Indy 500, you can hear from the winner. Giants with an 8 to 1 lead. George Contos back out. Adrianza's at short as he stays in the game. Arias is at second. So a new double play combination. And counting today of the four games counting today, three day games. Day game tomorrow, night game Tuesday, and a day game on Wednesday and the Giants will leave after the game on Wednesday for St. Louis headed to the hot weather St. Louis and Cincinnati a lot of hot a lot of humid a lot of rain forecasted have you ever packed an umbrella no you're going to you're not going to pack one. no one but ball, one ball and no strike I've got my hefty bag though right. don't leave home without it baby the extra extra large 55 gallons there's a shot into the hole by Maurer, so that saves his day. Maurer was 0 for 3 with three strikeouts against Bumgarner. And here comes Plouffe. Yeah, he was having no fun against Bumgarner. Plouffe is 0 for 3. Sandoval made a nice play in the sixth inning. Hicks is going to run for Maurer. So here's Ploof. And a strike. And it's own one. Suzuki to follow. And that's out of play. First throw of the club level. Gentleman stood up, to, had his glove, and made the catch. Nice play. I tell you, the forgotten soul today has been our ball dude on the third base side, David Schwartz. He is 0 for today. Yeah. Actually, he did have a, a ground ball. We were going to a replay. And he wasn't a great play, but he made the play. And nobody saw it. And nobody saw it. So, David, just one of those days. In tight one and two. Cantos replaced Bumgarner, who is fabulous. Strikes out. Blue. Third strikeout for Contos. And that's 13 strikeouts combining Bumgarner and Contos today. Brandon Bell, as you mentioned earlier, Kipe got his cast off of his broken thumb. You see he's got a bandage on it still. Yeah. Probably a soft cast to protect little, it from bumping it. A little duct tape. But he can move it around. Oh, yeah, you duct tape. You can conquer the world with duct tape. Here's Suzuki. When something needs to be fixed in the house, isn't that the first thing you think of? Honey, where's the duct tape? <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> One ball and no strikes to Kurt Suzuki. He was hit on the foot in the seventh inning. Here he pops this one up. And it'll be Morse. Two outs. And here's Nunez.
Nunez 0 for 3. I ask my wife that all the time. Honey, where's my duct tape? And it's always the same answer. It's in your shaving kit. Nunez got. So you do take that on the road. Oh, yeah. I can make an umbrella with enough duct tape. Nunez takes a fastball and gets a man. Might have been a cutter. One ball and no strikes. Yeah, he's got the broom ready. And this really is a nice reward for Contos to be able to close things out. You get the 27th out, even if it's not a safe situation. If your team's winning, that's a lot of fun. Two and oh. There's a strike. Two balls and one strike. And I've always thought this about Contos. I think he could throw that slider over more than his fastball when he absolutely has to throw a strike. On the ground to Sandoval. And that's the ball game. Giants in this three game series. They sweep the Twins. And now in interleague they're 6 and 0 having swept the Indians. In the other interleague series. Both here at AT&T Park. And they up their record to 32 and 18. Well, I mean, they're firing on all pistons. They're getting good pitching. They're getting great defense. And they're getting distribution offensively up and down the lineup. You don't know where it's coming from, but you're getting a different hero with the bat every night. An 8 1 final. And the Giants will indeed celebrate a sweep. But right now, it's time for our Honda player of the game. And if you think back to 2011 when Madison Bumgarner had his worst start in his career against this Minnesota team he went one third of an inning gave up eight earned runs today he atoned for that and he was brilliant through seven ten strikeouts he allowed one run the three hits and he is our Honda player of the game. Yeah he's not his record now goes to six and three. Did not walk a hitter and he struck out. Uh, and I think his fastball command, really the command of everything, was just exceptional. He'd been looking for this set of mechanics for a while. All right, let's check in with Amy G and a guest. All right, Dwayne, thanks so much. And Michael, just a well played game. You guys sweep the Twins, three doubles for you. The most impressive, though, came in the fifth inning. You cleared the bases. Take us through that AB against Alasco. It was, uh, it, it was tough. Um, you know, I just try to stay. Uh, you know, relax and get something in the strike zone to hit something, um, you know, just to put in play and, um, you know, anything could happen. You that philosophy seems to be happening across the entire lineup because the Giants now lead the majors with two out RBI. What does that say about you guys in clutch situations and the ability to come through? I guess we're clutching up. <laughs> um, man, we, we got such a good team, man. It's such a good hitting team. And uh, we believe in ourselves. We believe in our team. We believe in the guy behind us. So, um, you know, with that philosophy, uh, you know, just put, try to put in play. You know, if you, if you can't do it, the guy behind you will. Madison Bumgarner, seven strong. He looked great. What did you see from first base from him? Um, you know, I, I saw Matt Bum, man. Uh, he threw strikes. Um, you know, he kept the game going. He kept us in the game the whole uh, the whole time. And, uh, you know, uh, he, uh, he did his thing. Something that probably plays into how well you guys are doing this season and Dwayne and Mike are the first to say this you guys seem to be having a lot of fun yeah. and on second base you're standing there they play your song oh, take take on me uh-huh and you're smiling and you're lighting up what's your relationship been like with the fans so far it's 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 incredible man I, I can't even words can't describe it man uh, it's the best fans in baseball uh, you know it, it's 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 a joy to come here every day and play and um, you know I just it's it's a, it's, a, it's incredible Michael Morris, congratulations on the win and the sweet man. Dwayne and Mike, back to you. All right, thanks, Amy, and thanks to Michael Morris. What a nice job. 
and uh, you got something in your hand, you're dying to tell me. I, I can see it. Well, I mean, there's a lot of good things that happen in the series. I mean, but uh, the, the Twins were 0 for 19 with runners in scoring position. I mean, that's money pitching. I mean, that, that's what you'll work for if you're a pitcher to be able to come up with stuff that enables you to eliminate threat. And when a team goes 0 for 19, like the Twins did in this series, they're not going to win any games. And uh, just a lot of really great things happening in this in, on this team right now. But I like what Michael Morse said. Believe in the guy behind you. What a great way to put it. And, and that is something they did not have for, for the month of April or a couple of weeks. Well, they've got it now. And they do believe in the guy behind him because the guy behind him is coming through. All right. Final score, the Giants 8 and the Twins 1. East Sheeran's Giants post game live with interviews. And the wrap is coming up. But first, let's go to the Sportsnet Central Studio.